YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here with another video. And in today's video, I'll be ranking the Redskins free agency moves, like um, from a grading scale, an A to an E. Um, how they did, I'll be ranking their, their performance in free agency this year. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. But before we do, make sure you guys go down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new, and turn on post notifications so you get notified when I upload a video about the NFL, or in this case, the Washington Redskins. And let's get straight into today's video. So, the Washington Redskins, although free agency isn't over, it seems like it's starting to slow down since all the big names are off the board. Not 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 all of them, but majority of the big names are off the board. So, it seems like free agency is starting to slow down, although it's not over. Kevin Klein, or not Kevin Klein, but uh, what's his name? John Klein, um, a Redskins reporter. He said that he expects the Redskins to, you know, add a weapon to this team as far as, you know, wide receivers since they were heavily pursuing Amari Cooper, but they couldn't, you know, wither him away from Dallas because, I mean, he wanted to be in Dallas at the end of the day, so they couldn't do that. So he said he still expects the Redskins to add another big weapon, but in this case, it doesn't seem like they're adding another big weapon because they <clears throat> they're letting all of the, the weapons go away, you know what I mean? So... Before we get into grading how they did in free agency, I'm going to go over all of the free agents that they did sign. So starting things off with Brandon Sheriff, we slapped the franchise tag on him. Come here, Brandon. We, we slapped the franchise tag on him for roughly $16 million for one year. Um, we also signed John Bostic to another two-year deal. We signed guard Wes Schweitzer from the Falcons. We um we signed that boy Kendall Fuller. You know, welcome home, Kendall Fuller, to a four-year, forty million dollar deal, ten million dollars a year. That boy Kendall Fuller is a homebody. He went to Good Council High School, went to V Tech, and now he won he won a ring with Kansas City, and he's back where he got drafted to. So we got Kendall Fuller. We got cat linebacker Kevin Pierre Lewis. We got linebacker Thomas Davis, one of the veterans on this team, and one of the great veterans that um was a part of that team. And when they went 15 and one with him and Ron Rivera, went 15 and one in Carolina and went to the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, they lost, but they still made it to the show. Um, besides safety Sean Davis, who I actually was, you know, I misconstrued myself with Sean Davis. I really thought he was a bum and he was a bust and he wasn't really anything to be happy about. But after I did more research on him. A lot of Steelers fans says he sucks or whatever, but um he was hurt last year, like I said. He was hurt, he had a shoulder injury, and um he's a very good hard nosed safety that we need. He could beat out Monte Nicholson in training camp, so the free safety spot is a wide open and it should be fun for them two and the person that we're drafting. Cause I feel like we're gonna draft another safety in the in the upcoming draft. So, after Sean Davis, we have running back JD McKissick. Um, I remember in my video, I was calling him JT McKissick, but it's actually JD McKissick. Um, he seems like he's going to be the new Chris Thompson role, the new third down back. Um, him and Bryce Love, I, I feel that they will split the time in there, or they will fight it out for that third down back role. I think I want to give it more to Bryce Love because he's more younger. Um, JD McKissick isn't old by any chance. He's still in his late or uh, mid mid twenties. But also, I still since we're going young, why not go young? Um, but I feel like that JD McKissick might end up getting the role because um he he has he has experience. He has experience, and um we don't know what we're gonna get out of Bryce Love yet. Yes, he had a very good college years, but is that gonna transfer him over to the NFL because we know a lot of players that had great college years but is it going to go over to the NFL a lot of players not even just running backs let's talk about Johnny Manziel for an example although he had a party issue and, and drinking issue I don't think Bryce Love will have that but that's another person that balled out in college but didn't pan out in the NFL so after JD McKissick I see him being a new third down back on his team um taking over for Chris Thompson Chris Thompson hell of a seven years in DC too um, I love you for everything you did, but your time is up. After J.D. McKissick, we have another VTech guy in Logan Thomas, tight end from Detroit Lions. Um, we look, seems like we're loving Detroit, man. Um, we got Logan Thomas. We talked about Logan Thomas. He's six six. Um, he, he's a, he was a quarterback in VTech, um, but he he was he had a strong arm, but he just wasn't accurate. Um, we I showed y'all the video clip of him putting Ryan Kerrigan on his behind. And um, I don't see him being a starter on this team, but I do see him being at least a tight end two at its best or a tight end three at its best. So we got Logan Thomas. And to close everything off, we finished our signing so far with offensive tackle 
Cornelius Lucas. You can never trust a man with two first names like Louis T. likes to say. Cornelius Lucas, I think he will have a big role on his team. I actually think he's probably the only one, him, Kendall Fuller, and probably John Bostick and Thomas Davis is probably the only t people on this team or on that list that is like almost a lot to make this team. Everyone else I see having to fight it out in Channing Camp, and would not, I would not be surprised if a draft pick could that be draft this year beat him out. You know what I mean? So, like, back to Cornelius Lucas. Cornelius Lucas is 6'9". There's no reason why he should not start. 6'9", offensive tackle. He's a swing tackle. He can play the right side or, in this case, the left side. Um, I feel like that he will fit best on the left side because um, we, we have a big hole there, especially on that left side of the offensive line with Eric Flowers going to Miami and Trent Williams obviously don't want to be here. So I I, I I feel like that he feels best on that left side of the line, man. You're 6'9". There's no reason why you shouldn't be starting. Um, last year in uh, 507 snaps, he only allowed one sack. So that's a good stat for him. Um. That's, that's, that's good. That's actually pretty good. And, and considering the fact that we need a left tackle bad, or in this case, we can use him at right tackle too because, you know, Morgan Moses seems like to be on his last leg, his last year as a Washington Redskin. And I would not be surprised if after this year he's cut. Cornelius Lucas is a swing tackle. Like I said already, he can play both sides. Excuse me. He can play both sides, and and that that's kind of good. We haven't had that kind of tackle in a very long time. And I want to say probably was Ty Naseki a swing tackle? I, I'm not really sure. Uh, I, he, I think he could have played the right side of the line, too. I think he actually, in fact, he did play the right side of the line. But you don't quote me on this. I'm not sure. But um, Cornelius Lucas is probably my favorite signing other than bringing back Kendall Fuller. Um, Cornelius Lucas is probably my favorite signing because he's 6'9", and he's just such a big body. And he only allowed one sack in 500 snaps last season. So that's pretty good. Now, let's move on to the Washington Redskins grading. For their whole free agency moves and everything that they did this free agency, like I said earlier, it's not over, but it seems like it's over because all the big names are off the board. So from the signings here on out that we've been doing, it's not new to us because we've been doing all free agency, but all the signings here on out are probably going to be debt pieces. But to us, that's what we've been doing all year. So I'm with all free agencies, no, so don't be surprised. Um, So... With that out the way and time to grade their free agency moves, I'm giving the Washington Redskins a whopping D. A whopping D, a high D, low C. Because we had all this money going into free agency, $60 million or like $50 million, um, getting cap space, and we didn't do anything with it. I'm not saying that we didn't do anything with it in, 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 in getting players, but we had all these reports coming out that we were going to be aggressive in free agency and getting the big names. And um, I know sometimes getting the big names isn't always the best option, but it's what the it's what you know we it's, that's what that's what's gonna put butts in the seat at FedEx Field, honestly. Not not to throw any shade at any of these players on the list besides Kendall Fuller, but picking a list up again besides Kendall Fuller and Brandon Sheriff, nobody on this list is exciting to watch. Nobody's gonna nobody's gonna come to FedEx Field and say. Oh, I want to see Wes Schweitzer. I want to see Logan Thomas. I want to see J.D. McKissick. No. I mean, unless they have a, a bomb training camp and a bomb um, um, preseason, nobody's going to be excited to see none of these guys play. You know what I mean? So I would like to see have more aggressiveness from Ron Rivera in next free agencies, man. Because it's like, yeah, I know if you want to build your team in a draft, that's understandable. But I would I would understand that even more if we had a ton of draft picks. If we had multiple first round picks in a couple seconds, then I would understand why you want to say we can build this team in the draft. But we can't build this team in the draft because we don't even have that many picks. We don't have a second round. We have what two fifth two fifth rounds I want to say, and probably two sevens, one first round pick. I, I don't see how you can build this team in the draft where you have, what, I want to say two th third rounds and not a second round. Three through five is the meat of the draft. Is That's where you're going to find all your sleeper picks. Plus, must I say, Terry McLaurin, Kelvin Harmon, sleeper picks. You know, by our boy Kyle Smith. That you need them important picks. And, and we have picks, but we don't have enough picks to where we can say we can build this team in the draft. You know what I'm saying? You're catching my drift. So I, with all this money... I would like us to be 
more aggressive in free agency. Or I would like us to have been more aggressive in free agency because we had all this money to spend. Now, I'm not going to knock Ron Rivera 20, um, 100% because Ron Rivera did try to lure um, Mari Cooper away from um, Dallas. But also, on the other hand, I am going to get on Ron Rivera because we had interest in Eric Ebron. If you don't know, Eric Ebron signed a two-year, $12 million deal. Or was it two-year? Yeah, two-year, $12 million deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And after he signed his deal, we were we all before that we all wanted Eric Ebron since all Austin Hooper and all the other options, Hunt, Austin Hooper and Hunter Henry were already gone. Our last talk was Eric Ebron, and you heard me and a lot of other Redskins YouTubers pursuing and wanting us to get Eric Ebron. And um, the, the Pittsburgh Steelers beat us to the punch. Pittsburgh Steelers offered him a twelve year, uh, twelve million dollar deal for two years, and um, Ron Vera said that we were interested, but he wasn't paying him that much. What do you mean you're not paying them that much, Ron? That's literally cheap. You're literally getting a, t a high talent in Eric Ebron, a young talent. He's, what, 26, 25 years old. For that cheap, I understand that it's a, it's a high, it's a high risk or low risk and high reward kind of deal, man. You're getting him for, two, for $6 million a year for only two years, and you could cut him after the one year if he doesn't perform well, that's that's a no-brainer, dawg. You have the money to make the move, so why are you not making the move? Why are you not making the move? You, you, Eric Ebron is a first, a former first-round pick. He balled out with the Colts that year, Andrew Luck. That year, they made it to the playoffs, and then with Andrew Luck coming back, he balled out that year. Now, the reason why I can understand why he didn't want to get him is because he's injury is injured, but it's not like he was asking for a ton of money because he wasn't. He wasn't asking for a ton of money, man. Six million dollars a year, we can eat that, man. Especially with the, how much cash space we have or had before free agency started. That's the reason why I'm getting them a, a low D, a high D, low C because I would like would have liked to see them being more aggressive in free agency. Um, I'm not saying the moves that they did make are not good depth pieces move, but we need that starter on that team. We need more weapons for Dwayne Haskins. We need. We still don't have a tight end. I know you say you can get a tight end in the draft, but we missed out on Austin Hooper, Hunter Henry, and now Eric Ebron. Um, only option that we have left are a bunch of veterans. A bunch of veterans in Delaney Walker, Tyler Eifert, um, like Louis T said in his podcast, yet well not podcast, but his live stream yesterday, where he's like, it's right now it's a bunch of young talent leading itself. It's the blind leading the blind at at the tight end position. You know what I mean? We have a bunch of young, young, not even tight end ones on this roster, man. We have what Logan Thomas, Hill Hedges, Jeremy Sprinkle, all leading each other. We need that veteran presence in that on, on this team. And Delaney Walker, Tyler Eifert to lead them and show them how it's done. You know what I mean? And for us not to get a tight end or any any more, you know, dominant receivers to pair up with Dwayne and Terry McLaurin is just crazy. I understand if you want to go young, go young, and you want to build for the future, but you also need them them set of veterans to help the young guys. And not even that, you have Robbie Anderson out there who. I personally wanted, I wanted Emmanuel Sanders or Robbie Anderson, but, you know, Emmanuel Sanders is probably in a win-now mode. When you're towards the end of your career and you want to win as many Super Bowls as you can, you probably don't want to be, you know, with the Washington Redskins that's rebuilding, or should I say not rebuilding in a way, but they're building for the future. They're two years or probably one year, two, three years away from being um, Super Bowl contenders, and he by that time, he's going to be, what, like 36 years old, so he's probably not in the state of mind where he can, you know, be on the team that's rebuilding or building for the future, because he wants to win now. So I can understand why Emmanuel Sanders, or we didn't pursue Emmanuel Sanders that much, because... He wants to win now, hence that's why he went to his, you know, um, 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 Saints. <laughs> I was thinking the name I had a brain fart, man. They saw the New Orleans Saints. So, last thing I want to talk about here was Robbie Anderson. You don't let, nobody's interested in Robbie Anderson, man. So, I understand that he might want a ton of money, and that's probably why you don't want to, you know, pay him that much money. But, screw it, man. We have all this money. Just give him the money. Just give him the money, man, or try to talk him down. Since you can be like, you can use some leverage. You can say no, t no other team wants you, no other team wants you. So you can use that as an example or a as a as a leverage and, and to your advantage to say, talk them down to probably like what eight million dollars a year. You can say no other team wants you. So you either get this money right here, 
get this money right here, or you just sit out on the couch for a whole year and be broke. Be broke. So try to use that to your leverage. That's what I'm saying. That's how you can. That's how you can use that to your leverage if you was to go after Robbie Anderson. But in this case, it doesn't seem like you guys are going to go after Robbie Anderson. So. I mean, I guess we're building for the draft, guys. I guess we're building for the draft. I'm, for, I'm not going to say unfortunately, but I would have liked the Redskins to make that big splash because, I mean, we, we need it. We need the help. We need the help to win Haskins. And on that defensive side, we need we um need another free safety. We need a couple more cornerbacks. And on the offensive side, we need to figure out our tackle positions, our guard position, our, our left guard position. I'm, I, I mean, I guess we have Morgan Moses for another year, so, I mean, Although Morgan Moses is bad, what worse can you do? Imagine if we didn't have Morgan Moses. That would be that would be a nightmare. So we need to figure out this line. We need to figure out a left tackle. We need to figure out a left guard. And that's really that's really it. That's really it. So like I said, I gave the Washington Redskins a low D or a high D, low C for their free agency. I would have liked them to see, like them have been more aggressive in free agency because we need the help that we can get for our young talent on this team. So I guess Ron Rivera approaches to build depth in free agency and get our stars in the draft, which isn't a bad approach. But I still would like him, like I said, I would like him to have been more aggressive in free agency. Let me know what you guys think down below as always about this topic what would you grade the washington redskins for their free agency moves this um this uh free agency a through e or a through f however it was like when you was in school or was the lowest graded e or f let me know what you guys think down below as always tell me what you would rate the redskins free agency um what would you what would you have graded them i gave you my topic now the floor is yours like comment subscribe hello to the redskins this has been your boy one guy um wash your hands man we're going through this pandemic and we're going to get through it together World pandemic, we're gonna give it, get through it together. We're gonna to kill this thing. I'm not gonna say it because you know YouTube doesn't want you to say it on their platform, but you know what I'm talking about. So make sure you wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. And it's me, your boy Juan Gotti. Like, comment, subscribe, hello to the Redskins, and I will be bringing you the best Redskins coverage all 2020. Peace.